Well, John, welcome to the Open Group. It's great to have you here. Um, it's been a while since we've been on the same bill, but uh, I, I saw you speak in New York 15 years ago. It was very entertaining. Uh, how, when, when did you start the Zachman Framework? Well, I probably brought, drew the original uh, graphics around 1980. Mm -hmm. It was published internally. Uh, I worked for IBM for a lot of years. Published internally in about 1984, and then uh, in the Systems Journal in 1987. But I probably sketched it out in 1981. And it's sustained all this time. Well, actually, the, my framework hasn't changed. You know, it's deriving from uh, classification structures that mm -hmm. humanity had used for thousands of years. Uh, you know, it comes back to the uh, linguistic structure. You want a complete description of something, you have to answer six questions, and that yeah. hasn't changed for 7,000 years. The other dimension, I didn't realize the theoretical base for it. I, I, I saw kind of empirically what it was uh, about. Uh, comes from reification from out of the, you know, the philosophy domain where an idea you have is one thing, but the instantiation of that idea is a completely different thing. Mm -hmm. So you have to take the idea and transform it into the, uh, into, through a series of well-known transformations into the instantiation. So the classification, the schema has been there forever. My framework has been there forever. Mm -hmm. I, I just happen to see the pattern, and I appreciate people put my name on it, but uh, it's uh, the, the, the structural pattern for descriptive representations has been uh, the same for thousands of years. Yeah. Well, I can remember when we started looking at architecture, enterprise architecture, um, it was our customers, people like the uh, CCTA, mm -hmm. the Central Communications, Central Communications Agency in the UK, yeah. the NHS, Lloyds Bank, those sort of organizations yeah. came along and demanded we need standards for how to do architecture. Yeah. And uh, in our industry, in our standards industry, people couldn't understand how you could have standards for architecture yeah. because they were non normative, you know, you just guide and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we've come a long way because the standards industry now recognizes that those type yeah. of standards are critical. Really critical. So you're you're teaching TOGAF and Zach McFreeberg. Right, I own FIAC now, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure you might uh, might be familiar with. We teach uh, the federal standards, which is the uh, Federal Enterprise Architecture Framework, also DODAF, the Department of Defense, and also TOGAF as well. Yeah. Plus. Uh, the folks who who started uh, FIAC wanted to retire. Made it. Yeah. I taught there for since the beginning, so they made it easy for me to acquire it. But uh, so we still teach those things. Plus, we teach the Zachman framework, and now it becomes really much more practical to us to be more definitive about the you know, the integration of those concepts. And mm -hmm. So that's that's why we're here talking. I don't even know who precipitated our meeting here, Alan, whether it was you or me or both of us or whatever, but this really is a profoundly significant thing. And I think this may be a, uh, a milestone uh, from an industry standpoint, because uh, I remember one time you introduced me to a TOGAF conference in Johannesburg. And I did. And, uh, Without any discussion or prompting from me, you basically made the observation for a lot of years you thought it was either TOGAF or Zachman. Mm -hmm. And you, in the introduction, you said it's not TOGAF or Zachman, it's TOGAF and Zachman. And that's the point. Yeah. So, I've always seen them as complementing yeah. each other. Um, <clears throat> I, I like the, the, the six uh, headings across the top, um, and I like that way of thinking. But obviously, populating that yeah. is, is a challenge. And yeah, well, that's right. So, exactly. when I saw you 15 years ago in New York, you said that some organizations could fill in the top bit, and as it got further down and down, down it, it got tough. <laughs> Have you seen organizations fill in the complete framework? Well, one thing is uh, you, you don't necessarily populate the complete framework. It's my framework, I use the metaphor a lot of times, a periodic table. You don't have to have all the elements actually to create whatever the compounds you need. So you may or may not populate the entire framework. I, I would argue 
in enterprises, you probably do want to populate the entire framework at some point. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you have to, you know, the enterprises of the future, of today and beyond, I, I make the case that the game has changed here. We're moving farther into the information age, and the characteristics we know about is extreme complexity, extreme change. So if you want to deal with complexity and change, you are going to do, you'll have some classification for complexity and change. You have to retain the descriptive representations of base, based on your change. So someday, every enterprise probably going to wish they had all the descriptive representations. But that comes, that you don't need, necessarily need it initially. You know? Right. So um, the, the other thing is, I, those of us who come from the information community, we tend to, we, we tend to operate at the bottom, actually. You know, we, we, we have a lot of formalism set for uh, some of the lower rows of my, of my uh, structure. And, uh, uh, we're beginning to get more sensitive. I think that was a pretty innovative thing that Togaf dealt with to begin with. It began to raise the level of its built into the enterprise. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really significant. Yeah. yeah. And how, how do you react to the sort of growth of uh, Agile and DevOps? Well, one thing is, I normally, when people ask me about this, there's something good about everything, but no one thing does everything, okay? So you have to know what's good and what's not so good. So Agile is a, 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 a programming process. It's a, it's a, it's a, a kind of a, 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 a project management kind of a device, but uh, in order to build and run things, you need to decompose them down into smaller pieces because the smaller the piece, the faster and cheaper it is to manufacture. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you decompose things, uh, you basically, it's a function of analysis that decompose it. But all those things have to fit together, okay? So you have to deal with this issue of synthesis as well because if the pieces don't fit together, all you have is a lot of pieces. Exactly. So, so uh, for Agile, it's really good if you're trying to get the code to run. You, you break it down smaller pieces get the code to run, which is really good. It's running. On the other hand, if you don't have some kind of architectural construct which defines how the pieces integrate, mm -hmm. you're going to end up with a lot of code, which is not too different from what we have today. We have lots of code. Exactly. It is not integrated, not flexible, not interoperable, not reusable, not aligned, and so on. So, those are engineering derived characteristics. So somebody has to do some engineering first, and then you reuse the primitive, compo what I call primitive components mm -hmm. in the in the agile implementations. And that, that in that fashion, what would happen is you would get the implementation, you get the thing running, but they would be architected as well as running. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any architecture, it's running, but it's not architected. Okay, so. You, you need to have both, okay? So it's, well, it's, good, it's not either or, it's an yeah. and issue. So. Yeah, I, I certainly subscribe to that, as you know. And yeah. Every now and again, you come across people that say, oh, we don't need enterprise architecture, we're doing agile. And you say, <laughs> you know, there's going to be a train wreck somewhere. Yeah, right, exactly. So you're going to move along <laughs> that. But what I've been trying to um, get, certainly with our internal development and activity, is that the enterprise architecture is more visible on a two-week cycle. Mm. So you, you can produce things on a two-week cycle that show what's happening with the enterprise architecture. So it's not one of these things that's going on under the surface. And then when you're, you're doing rapid de de development and deployment, it's actually in lockstep with the architecture. Yeah, there's a really important point, I think. I, uh, one thing is I'm not, you know, the time frame uh, yeah. Once we begin to build uh, some inventory of the architectural constructs, then that, that I think we can reduce the time to market for implementation down to very short periods of time. In fact, this idea has been around the IT community since the very beginning. We don't, I don't hear people talk about it, but it's late binding. You want to keep everything separate until the point in time you click the mouse. That's when you, pull, you hard bind things together. That's the implementation. So. Uh, and if you have some, that, if you want to reduce the time to market, yeah, that presumes that you have something in inventory. But what you have in inventory has to be engineered to be assembled into more than one thing. Mm -hmm. with manufacturer call mass customization. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. And now here, here's my little uh, twist on that issue. In the short term. 
I am changing my perception here, uh, and I had some experiences here lately, and I, I don't know that this is uh, going to take time to, to work through this in, uh, in any detail, but uh, I think what we have to do is we have to change the whole perception of enterprise architecture. It's not one of IT building models, basically. It's one of solving general management problems. Mm -hmm. If you can solve the general management problem, you know, the problems, you know, there's no shortage of problems. And if you can solve the general management problem in some period of time, you know, a month or two months or a week or two weeks, mm -hmm. whatever that time period is, if you can solve that problem, that the, the, uh, the resource and the cost, the cost and time issue tends to go away. Because mm -hmm. if you can solve the general management problem, you say, hey, that was really good. I got another problem, by the way. Right. So if we can just do this, we can begin to build the architectural constructs iteratively and incrementally, little by little by little, problem by problem by problem over some period of time, and building up the inventory of well, what I call primitive components that can be assembled into ensuing uh, problem solutions. Mm -hmm. So that's my my uh, my observation, and I'm I feel pretty strongly about this. We those of us who care about the subject, and there's not. I don't know whether I should say this or not. I'm probably, probably going to regret this, but you know, there's not too many people who are thinking about this. Right. You know, there's a handful of us who care. But those of us who care really need to change the perception. We've we got to start solving general management problems. Right. And then, you know, that will buy us the time and resource required yeah. to build out the you know, architectural construct. Yeah, and there was nothing ever about the Zachman framework or Togaf that said that it wasn't going to do the general management problems. Yeah, so right. I think the top row yeah. is, is identifying those people. And so we've never yeah. had that. But all of a sudden, we're seeing a lot of. Uh, people that are very keen on uh, these things coming out around business architecture, yeah. right? And it's it's not anything new, as far as I can see. It's the things that we've been doing for a while, but it's just being given the sort of feeling that it's all about IT, where in actual yeah, fact it's about right. the enterprise architecture. You know, that's really a good a good observation. I uh, I I. Uh, been with a lot of the business architectural folks, okay, and uh, and a lot of them come from the IT domain. Uh, and it's interesting they change their attitude; they get disdainful about IT. You know, mm -hmm. they say, "Well, we're business," and when I hear "we're business" and "you're IT," or "we're IT and you're business," that is not a good idea. That is a that you know that that is divisive. That's exactly what you don't want to have happen. When I talk to the business architecture folks, uh, they tend to be having very passionate discussions, but they don't define business architecture the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay, now in the context of my framework, I can identify 176 plausible definitions for business architecture. Mm -hmm. And I basically say, until you can get definitive about which one you're talking about, you may be talking about one of those definitions, and whoever's listening to you can be hearing any other of the 175. So, you know, this is another one of those, uh, you know, subjects that is, uh, you know, it's like a silver bullet. Wait a minute, there's nothing magic going on here. I would just send a presentation a few minutes ago when they were talking about capability, same thing. Yep. And having a passionate discussion about capability, what does that mean? How many different definitions are there? And if you don't define it precisely, yeah. then you can be talking about one thing and anybody who's listening can be hearing something completely different. So but that's the idea. I and uh, you know, there there is a community of folks who who care who are talking about business architecture these days. Mm -hmm. But uh, but once again, they're not being very precise about their right. the discussion. <clears throat> right. But there's definitely a need out there. Yeah, I know. I th th these are really critical. I and I uh, the problem the problem is uh, I I argue the case that you you've got to start working on these kind of things. But you don't learn how to do this in a day. You mm -hmm. know, you. Uh, I have a friend of mine who says, you don't learn how to play golf the first time you go out and play. You got to play for a, you know, a lifetime before you get good at it. So, but when the enterprise wakes up someday and they're in extremis because they can't accommodate the demands from the external environment, right. the game is over mm -hmm. unless they have been working on this. So they have some uh, some understanding of what it is and probably have some inventory of the architectural constructs and. 
this is really critical. We see a lot of enterprises, forgive me for, for, uh, uh, for elaborating this, but a lot of enterprises have been going out of business here in the last few years. The small ones go out, the big ones go out. Yep. Uh, and it's not only the private sector, the public sector, okay? So nobody's exempt from this. You, and I'm going to say, if you don't begin to deal with these architectural issues, uh, that's a high-risk uh, position you're putting yourself in. So. And part of that is understanding what's changing in the market. Yeah. Yeah. So, coming back to TOGAF and the Zachary framework, where do you see the synergies between the two? Well, one thing is uh, the the my my framework. I define a single variable, pr what I call primitive uh, components. Actually, and, uh, what Dogev Dogev uh, defines uh, some artifacts that are created for for practical use. It's a, what I would call a composite structure. In some cases, are some maybe primitive, but in some most cases, are are uh, are, are uh, implementation composite in nature. And this is to be expected because, you know, the, the reality, the world is full of compounds, composites, okay? You know, we don't see the elements you know, in, in the tangible things we touch. We don't see the elements, we see the compounds. So my framework is just classifying the elements, okay? So if you use the elements, if you're, you use the chemistry metaphor, you're using the elements to create the compounds. That's what you want to do. So that's where the integration point takes place. So, I would just say, you know, and whenever I'm talking with anyone, I'd say on the next iteration, there's going to be another iteration. So I would just say on the next iteration, you need to start searching for the primitive components. And I pretty well, I think, based upon the classification structure that humanity has used for thousands of years, I think we know precisely what the primitive components are. So that's what we want to put in the inventory. Then those become the reusable building blocks of you. And, and I know that's a term. Mm -hmm. term that, used in uh, Tokyo, but uh, those be the primitives become the building blocks. And that's what you want to create the composite implementations from the primitive components. That's the way it is. I have a friend that will be with me this week, and uh, he he talks about using uh, my framework as kind of a Rosetta Stone. If you have to, you know, translate between mm -hmm. TOGAF and XYZF, you know, there, mm -hmm. well, you know, the, the primitive turns out to be the common, oh, okay. common point, yeah. so that's probably yeah. And it, it, the, some people, because of, I mean, when you look at the history, you know, we've got about 70 years or so in the information domain, and uh, uh, we, haven't, uh, we, uh, we, we haven't recognized the practicality of the elementary or primitive components. They've mm -hmm. been perceived to be a, a, a theoretical structure. And actually, my argument is, it's not theoretical, it's very practical. Hmm. So, you know, I think that's where we need to move. And there's a lot of room for creativity, a lot of room for innovation, a lot of room for specialization as right. well, for that matter. And, uh, so I think that, you know, I'm excited about, these are good times. Yeah. These are really good times. Yeah, well, those, those primitives, those headings, hmm. I use for all sorts of things, like yeah. marketing and so on, not just... Yeah. It's not, it's, not, it's not really an enterprise issue, it's, you know, it's, it is, uh, you know, the, it is the classifications that humanity has exercised for thousands of years. So. so when you come across someone that's about to embark on enterprise architecture, how, how would you advise them? Uh, well, the uh, one thing is that, well, my, my perception these days, I would start with the general manager's problem. But that presumes that you have some understanding of what the architectural constructs are. I would mm -hmm. parse out of that problem some of the primitive components that begin to you know, populate the, the, the uh, inventory. But you, you need a methodology to do that, okay? Yeah. So then I would embrace you know, a TOGAF, a methodology, to begin to populate the, the yeah. primitive components and then use that, use the primitives to create the comp composite of the comp Compound implementation, so yeah. that's what I would yeah. Well, I'd like to see the two uh, pieces yeah. of work um, be closer together. Yeah, I agree. Right right uh, I, mean, I think that would benefit the community I, well, I considerably. Think, uh, I think it would. And I, I don't see any uh, reason why that can't, can't happen. I, it's going to take some work, mm -hmm. uh, and we have a lot of inertia from you know from where we've come. So we got to get inside some of these 
of capability or you know yeah. business architecture, get inside to find out what the <coughs> composition of those things are so we can get down to mm -hmm. populate the elemental or primitive inventories from which we create the uh, composite. One of, one of the other things I'm fairly passionate about is creating um, a profession from enterprise architects. And the, the uptake of the AEA, um, 44,000 and growing, has been really quite good. Um, but we, we need a way of, you know, we've got TOGAF and the ZAC and framework for guidance for people. We have um, Open Certified Architect as a way of measuring that people can do the job, not just learn these things. But there's, there's not really an on-ramp uh, for architects uh, in, in any of the things we do to teach them how to do that. Now, I think FIAC does some of that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little <coughs> bit of that. I, you know, Al, this is really another good question. I, uh, Roger Greer, who was a uh, dean of the School of Library Information Management at USC years ago, just passed away within the last couple of months, but, uh, uh, I found some notes I made it in an old guide conference in 1991, I think it was. And, uh, he was differentiating the, a profession from the trade. Okay. And uh, he, he identified the, the profession cycle. Okay. Uh, you stop the first one, you diagnose the problem, mm -hmm. and then you prescribe a solution. And then you apply the prescription, and then you evaluate the results, and then you're into a cycle. The professional starts with the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. The trade starts with the application, the implementation. Okay, so what differentiates the professional from a trade is, you know, they start with the, you know, diagnose and then prescribe. So I say to enterprise architecture folks, we need to diagnose, we, be, we need to be the doctor. The yes. diagnosis is the enterprise problem. Yeah. We're going into the stage three with the solution. We're going for the solution. So wait a minute, so we need to, if you want to be a profession, we need to start with the diagnosis mm -hmm. and the prescription. Okay, chief, yeah. here's uh, you know four or five things we can do to address this issue. And they're complicated issues, so it's not one thing. So here are four or five things, which, which one do we want to Pick, or maybe multiple some, and then you then you implement the solution, and then you evaluate it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what differentiates. I, that comes from Roger from years and years ago. Oh, right. but, uh, I you know I just recently I, was, stumbled across my notes, and I was writing some things about this. But boy, I think that is a key to this whole this whole mm -hmm. thing. If you can prescribe the enterprise solution, I'll tell you what you're. Yeah, or prescribe the problem, and then if you can diagnose the problem, prescribe a solution. Our credibility, we won't have a credibility problem. We won't have a problem getting resource or time to do the do the architectural yeah. construct. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm going. Boy, I'm really glad you raised that issue. Yeah, I, I think it's really important. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that, you know, like any other profession, there are a lot of disciplines within it. Oh, right. So, you know, with... Um, you know, accounting, which is my profession originally. You know, you've got financial accountants, production accountants, uh, management accountants, or factory accountants, and so on. And with um, healthcare workers, the doctors have all got different specialisations mm -hmm. with lawyers. And there's no reason why we shouldn't have different specialisations within enterprise architecture. I, I agree. I mean, you know, we think we start thinking there's one enterprise architect. I'll tell you what, there's not one airplane architect or one mm -hmm. building architect. You know, there's, there's a lot of room for specialization. I, uh, we don't, uh, we start to think that, that, you know, one person does everything. Forget that. I mean, uh, the, I, I usually say, you know, nobody can, nobody knows everything. Life is too short. You know, these days when I wake up, I look in the mirror in the morning, I say, that man is running out of time. <laughs> so we just don't have time. Yeah, kind of you, can't, you can't know everything, you know. You, you, you have to have people who have some competence and experience in a variety of subjects. And I really like that idea, too. Yeah, we've got to move on that. Anyway, I'm great, really pleased that you're here with us. 
You know, every time I'm, I'm with you, Alan, I, I always feel better. So, <laughs> so I find somebody who really, who really is kind of to the same conclusions that I come exactly. to, maybe from a different perspective. But, you know, uh, I think we're coming to the uh, same kind of conclusions, and yeah. I always appreciate it. So I appreciate being here uh, no, this week. To have you. I'm, I'm doing a talk tomorrow on the subject of um, what I don't need from business architecture. Oh, geez, that's great. I have, I'm glad. I, 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 I'm anxious to hear that. So, so uh, it could be fun. That's it great. Fun. Or it could be controversial. Yes, well, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, thanks. It's been great yeah. talking to you. Thank you.